What's going on? Mitchell Rands, Tom Downey. You're watching NFL Daily by Chat Sports. We have the latest NFL news and rumors. If that's what you're looking for, you're in the right place. Make sure you guys like the video right now. So, Tom, a lot of news, a lot of rumors to cover. This one was an absolute bombshell. And I'm not crazy. talking about, you know, yeah. the Victoria's Secrets brawl. This was a huge one. How Luke is that Keekly. the first thing? And it is you. That's, a, that's how it's first. That's what you're getting here. Luke yeah. Keekley, stunning retirement at age 28. Man, like... Mind blowing to me. If if you were to create out the list of okay, who could retire before the age of thirty, Keekley probably should have been on that list because of his history of concussions, missed a bunch of time in 2015, 16, and 17, mostly healthy this past year. Retires at the age of 28. Very much goes the Andrew Luck route. If you had told someone this time last year, hey, what do you think about Andrew Luck being MVP? And Luke Keekley being Defensive Player of the Year. I would have said not surprised that, at all. That would make a lot of sense. <laughs> Instead, they're both out of the NFL. Keekley in that very emotional message posted on, on the Panthers' Twitter account last night was indeed a bombshell. But Keekley also fits in the Andrew Luck mold. He's a super intelligent guy who has who isn't his career is fully done like with the NFL. I am only NFL. Like like yeah. his his life goes beyond just football. So it is a huge blow, though, for Carolina. They're losing their best player maybe in franchise history. Like I know everyone loves Steve Smith, but Steve Smith's probably not going to be a Hall of Famer. We'll talk about Luke Keekley. I think he is going to be a Hall of Famer. So I'm sorry, Panthers fans, I don't know how you guys feel about, about the, the receiver, but what Keekley's done I'm in the NFL. I'm for Luke Keekley. I'm going to miss Luke Keekley. Uh, I mean, he is so good. He was, And he was so not even just good. It was assumed greatness. Like, oh, yeah, Luke Kickley, best linebacker in the NFL. Don't need to freak out about him the same way that we freaked out about Ray Lewis, potentially. Or, like, like idolized Ray Lewis. Kickley went about his business, consistently made plays, was just great. He's been the best linebacker in the NFL for the past five years, plus. Really, since he came into the NFL. Now, you already kind of gave your answer. Mm -hmm. See if people were paying attention. Mm -hmm. Is Luke Kickley a Hall of Famer, okay? He's mm -hmm. played in eight seasons. He's won in the Defensive Player of the Year, which was, in, I believe, in 2013. He's made five Pro Bowls, but you're going to look all at... Five All-Pros. All-Pros, my bad. The, but you're going to look at the longevity, eight years. Is that enough? For me, I'm going to type my one for yes, because when on the field, Luke Keekley I shouldn't even say went on the field. Like, he's been the best linebacker in the NFL, I'll say, over the last five, six years. Five All-Pros at linebacker should be an automatic Hall of Fame. Patrick Willis in there. Derek Brooks, five. Brian Erlacher made four. Luke Keekley had more All-Pros than Brian Erlacher in less time. Derek Thomas got in with two. Now, of course, All-Pro is not the only way to judge it. How about this? Since Luke Keekley entered the NFL in 2012, A, his first three years, he had 150 tackles each. Immediately Decent. was great. Decent. No player at linebacker, or excuse me, has more interceptions than Luke Keekley with 18 in that time frame. No NFL player has more tackles since Luke Keekley entered the NFL into 2012. In that time frame, nobody has more. Luke Keekley is a sure Hall of Famer in my eyes. We'll see how the NFL, NFL Hall of Fame community views them. They are not always right. I think it's a no-brainer. Well, another player that I can guarantee is going to go to the Hall of Fame, yes, he and is. he's coming back, Larry Fitzgerald. Can everyone just start typing Fitz in the comments? What, I love Fitz. What would have been the odds on Larry Fitzgerald playing longer than Luke Keekley and Andrew Luck combined? How many years? Have, like, how many years have Andrew Luck and Luke Keekley played? Is it more than seventeen? It's not more than seventeen. There you go. That's it's just it's just shy of it. I mean, I absolutely love me some Larry Fitzgerald. I'm glad that he's coming back, coming back for his seventeenth season. Now the report out there is that he's gonna get roughly 11 million plus incentives. That's basically what he made last year. Mm -hmm. Now people are typing my dad. That's Bosco Gamer, Super who's weird. a big uh, Cardinals fan. He's a big. Cardinals oh, fan. now it makes sense. Now it makes sense. So Bosco, Less weird. next time we ask to shout out your team, you better be shouting out Cardinals. So this is what Daddy Bosco's daddy did: 75 catches, now 804 yards, <laughs> four touchdowns. I think he's obviously lost a step. But he is he tends to does so much more for this team and their young receivers and young quarterback. I mean, Christian Kirk, I like him, Tom. But, I mean, Larry Fitzgerald, to me, is still the best I, option in this team. I see a lot of Larry Legends in the comments section. Oh, LLs. Like, that's, that's what he is. And I think the Bengals would be wise to take a similar approach. As long as the greatest player in your franchise history wants to play, probably let him keep playing. So, I know 11 million is kind of expensive, but I think for Fitzgerald – 
even if he's not wide receiver one, maybe he comes wide receiver two or three next year, whatever it ends up being, you don't use him as often, you bring him back because he's he is great in the locker room. He is beloved by the players and the fans. He helps Eric sell says, tickets. future governor of Arizona. Everybody loves Fitzgerald. I think he's also great for young Kyler Murray, too. I think that that's a big deal. Totally agree with you, Tom. Larry Fitzgerald's had an absolutely stellar career. Can't wait to see what he continues to do. So everyone out there right now, Tom's favorite time of the year is the NFL Draft. We want to figure out who also loves the NFL Draft. So if you do, type Y for yes, type N for no. Tom, I'm just going to type Y for yes for you. Thank I know you. you're absolutely I, I obsessed that. with the NFL Draft. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we can let the analytics team do this one, but uh, I think I, I can handle this. Okay, go into it. I'm seeing 100% yeses. So if you love the NFL Draft, Make sure you subscribe to YouTube.com slash ChatSportsTV. Tom's does a lot of mocks, Tom. Oh, you yeah. talk about it. I do you talk all about your mocks. kinds of draft coverage. We do mock drafts here. We do sleepers. Stay tuned for Sunday. Got something special and different planned for you guys. And if you just love mock drafts, well, we got another one coming out later this week, or excuse me, next week, early in the week. We'll have another mock draft for you guys. So stay tuned for that. We'll keep you covered all draft season long. And, yes, means we'll also have the NFL Draft live for you guys here on YouTube and Facebook. So, Tom, speaking of the NFL Draft, should the Bengals trade the number one pick? I want you to type T for trade or type K for keep. If you're watching on YouTube, you might get hit with an ad break. I'm going to make this the pinned comment on the video. So what I want you to do is scroll on down. Should the Bengals trade the number one pick? I have an interesting rumor that might change your mind. It's around Joe Burrow. And it's around the Bengals potentially trading the number one overall pick, Tom. I saw this I, in the doc, and I was like, talk to me. I am befi I am offended on behalf of Bengals fans that this is suddenly being an idea. ESPN <laughs> this morning was pushing the idea of Joe Burrow should refuse to play for the Bengals and demand a trade to go somewhere better. I hate that idea. A, I don't think that's who Joe Burrow is. Like, that's not really the the, the attitude vibe I, I get off, off of Joe Burrow. Beyond that, the Bengals would be dumb to do this. <laughs> like, like, assuming Burrow does want to play, and I, I think he does. I think that that's the case here. You don't pass on a franchise quarterback when you don't have one. Like, even if there are, even if you have doubts about Joe Burrow, and, and you should, there are reasons to be concerned. There's no such thing as a guaranteed prospect. You, you don't trade him away. You say, yes, we're going to make you our franchise quarterback. We're going to build everything else around you. Now, there is, of course, a price tag for every player, for every team, but it becomes so outlandish that it doesn't make sense. So what the Bengals should be doing is making the Bengals great again and drafting Joe Burrow. <laughs> I'm trademarking that, by the way. Making the Bengals great again. Tell me when the Bengals were great. Uh, the early Carson Palmer, Andy Dalton years when they should have won playoff games. Great. Ask any Bengals fan about the Kimo Van Ohoff and uh, blow to the to the what? leg of Carson Palmer. That was their year. What did you Ask just say? Any you know who Kimo Van cheap shot is? Everyone just type what? Kimo Van Loblo. Oh on, man. Dude. Okay. Well, the one of the reasons why this rumor is being floated out there, okay, Tom, is because of Joe Brady mm -hmm. now with the Panthers OC. Obviously, Brady was with Burrow. I actually think the Luke Kuechly trade makes this a little bit less likely, but the Panthers would be a team that would make sense to try and go up and get Joe Burrow. They have his offensive coordinator play caller, Joe Brady as the OC. Surely, Joe Brady would love to get Joe Burrow. Matt Rule would love to get Joe Burrow. And I have seen on the interwebs, I'm just I'm going to be blunt here, some horseshit trade offers for Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati and the Bengals. Like, just disrespectful what if we just traded a first-round pick and a second-round pick for number one overall? Guys, what are you doing? So to recap here what it could actually look like, you have to go back in time to the RG3 trade. Remember, this was, oh, this was pick number two for pick number seven, so not even as big of a jump. It was three first-round picks and a second-rounder. So at minimum, you are beginning right there. And then what you also have to do is factor in the, okay, well... We have to increase it to go from number seven to number one. That adds, frankly, an extra mid-first round pick to it right off the bat. And you've got to factor in, this is a player that the Bengals actually want. This is not somebody that they are looking to just give away and not retain. So that, that RG3 trade really does provide a nice little baseline, but it doesn't really capture just how expensive 
this trade would actually be. So I tried to put this together. You're going to lose your mind. Both teams, I think, say no, by the way. Okay. I honestly don't think this is, this is enough for the Bengals. Wow. Because they think they have the best quarterback in their franchise. That's the way they view this. I mean, that is a lot for one It is player. a lot. Like, Cam Newton's a throw-in. He basically is, a, is an extra second-round pick. That's that's really what Cam Newton would be You, are, you think the Bengals would turn this down? Yeah, I think they would. Four first-round picks, a second-round pick, a third-round pick, and Cam Newton. You think they say no? Because if you pass on the, on Joe Burrow, you don't get one this year. You don't get Tua, and I doubt you get Herbert if you trade down that I, far. Now, I, you can trade back up. But you could say, then I have Cam Newton. For how long? He's got one year left on his contract. You, 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 you have upgraded your position here, but you haven't actually improved your long-term outlook at quarterback. That's why it's so expensive. Like, when the when the final grades come in, Joe Burrow is going to be graded higher than, than, I think, most quarterbacks beyond Andrew Luck the past 10 years or so. Like, that's how highly he's going to be, be graded out. Whew. We, Tom. Well, Tom, if you want to bet on who's going to be the number one overall pick in the NFL draft, y'all can do it at BetDSI. Go to chatsports.com slash bet. Use our promo code NFL120. That gets you 120% deposit bonus. If you want to bet on the NFC Championship game, the AFC Championship game, one place to do it and one place only. That's at BetDSI. Use the promo, people. Let's talk about another quarterback. Probably going to be the number two quarterback drafted in the 2020 NFL yeah, draft. Maybe. I, I'm going to put my money on it. You're probably right. But I'm gonna, Tua, give me an injury update. I hope all is good. Well, his, his agent, Lately Steinberg, comes down to say he's going to be good to go for April on the draft. Really? Gonna his have agent some, said that. Huh. Yeah, he's going to have some throws. We're going to have that standard like little pro day deal, have the little session, make all the throws, ball to touch the ground, blah, blah, blah. The timing of this could be interesting because if you go back and listen to, I don't remember which video it was, we were talking about a potential time frame for Tua, and I mentioned, I don't know if he's going to be healthy enough. He's not going to be healthy in time for the combine. I, I can promise you that. I don't think he's going to be healthy for the team's pro day either. So what ends up happening is the combine's from February 24th to March 2nd. The Alabama pro day comes in about a month later on March 24th. 24th, excuse me. <laughs> then the NFL draft another month later. I think somewhere in the middle of those two dates between pro day and draft, that's when Tua begins to throw, which presents a very strange, unique, and rare opportunity that the pro day... And the first throwing and workouts you see from a potential top five pick come in a week or two before the draft. That's very unique, rare, and very drama-filled in the NFL. A lot of drama. I'm excited to see which team ends up taking Tua. I personally, I'm going to put my money down. I already have. I'm going to put it on the Miami Dolphins. Good I bet. think that they're going to end up taking Tua at number five. Or maybe you could see him trade up. I don't think that'll happen. So everyone, okay, throw it in the comments. Who's going to draft Tua? Facebook, YouTube, wherever you see this video, I want you to let us know who you think is going to draft Tua. Willie says the Dolphins. I see a couple of my Are we on the same it. board here? Mm -hmm. Dolphins? Mm -hmm. Shelly, what up? Dolphins? Troy Daniel says the Panthers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Bosco says Dolphins. There and Mops guy, I don't know if I got that right, says the Panthers. Continue to get your votes in. Now, let's talk about everyone start putting the clap emoji in. Jason Garrett of the Giants. This is interesting. We we meme and we joke and we make fun of, but it actually makes sense. If you are a first-time NFL head coach who is not a play caller on either side of the football, what would you like to have? A former NFL head coach who can also call your plays. Who has ties to the organization and Jason Garrett as he continues his Cowboys to Giants in both the player and as a coach. It actually makes sense. It, it is. It is. I know it's Jason Garrett. I think this would actually be a good hire by New York. Okay. Like, Garrett, you go way back when to when he first got the Cowboys job and when the Ravens offered him to be their head coach. How different could life have been in the NFL if, if the if the Ravens had not hired Harbaugh and instead hired Garrett? He was a good play caller. I think it makes sense. Tom Brady leaving the Patriots. We are going to continue uh, to talk so about frustrating. it. So, I don't know. Shannon Sharp said Brady is leaving the Patriots based on a report that Tom Brady moved to Connecticut which then came out that that rumor was false. And then also there was a report out there that Brady's suite has been cleaned out. Which has also been conflicted, too. Okay, I mean, every single year they clean out the suites, right? Every single year they clean out lockers. Yeah. But the, the report was <laughs> it was cleaned out in a way that it's never been cleaned out before. Somebody used, I don't know, Windex instead of Kleenex. Like, I, 
the all the whole report around Tom Brady. People are just trying to, I think, make up stories until we figure out what Tom Brady's actually going to do. It's it's so silly and frustrating. It's 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 trying to judge a decision that has not been made yet based on random things that actually don't impact the decision. Even if Brady was moving to Connecticut, which team is he playing for? <laughs> the Hartford Whalers? Like, it, it doesn't actually do anything. Like, that, that doesn't impact it. Okay, he's moving away, further away. He's still going to be there. Like, I don't get that. He cleaned out his locker in a way it's never been cleaned out before? What? Like... It's that, insane. What does that even mean? No one knows what it means. <laughs> did, did he leave a giant middle finger in there? Like, I just, I don't, I don't get it. it if you it, guys want to comment where you think Tom Brady is going to play, hey, that's what this show is all about. Here at Chat Sports, we're trying to be interactive. The Popo says, I'm not a Chargers fan. Those are extinct. But, hey, Tom Brady, Patriots fans, we got some nice gear for you coming up right now. We got gear up to 50% off Chat Sports. Dot com slash NFL sale. If you guys want a new hoodie, we got you. If you want an NFL jersey, guess what? We got a whole bunch of those too. If you don't see your favorite team on screen, it's okay. Your favorite team is available at chatsports.com slash NFL sale. I don't want a Cowboys t-shirt. You don't. But they make the exact same one for the Oakland Raiders. Mm -hmm. It's at chatsports.com slash NFL sale. Oh, would you look at that? There you go. We got a Raider zip up. Check the description. Check the comments. Probably the live chat as well. I've got the link for you guys in there. Yes, Bosco Gamer. It is official NFL gear. You can head over also, there limited and time. explore. Limited time, okay? So a lot of these offers, they're only a limited time, so you got to go take advantage of them. Chatsports.com slash NFL sale. Tom, Rob Marinelli, he's going to the Raiders. Um, I haven't really gotten your opinion on it because for I, me personally. I didn't hear your thoughts. I, I was very surprised that they fired Buckner, mm -hmm. who actually had a pretty good year with the Raiders. The Raiders had 13 sacks the year before. They had 32. They went from the 30th ranked rush defense to 8th. I personally think the only reason why Rod Marinelli was hired is because John Gruden didn't feel confident enough in Buckner to ever be a defensive coordinator. And maybe if Paul Gunther doesn't get it done, Marinelli then could be the new So DC. we had not talked about that. I, I was going to throw out that conspiracy theory myself. I think that's the only um, reason why he got hired. I, I, I think there's more to it than that. But I think Rod Marinelli does make sense as, a, as an interim defensive coordinator if they do move on from Gunther in the middle of the I season. I know that Gruden and Marinelli worked together. And that's what I was going to say. Gruden and Marinelli ha were, were long-time uh, like co-workers, for I guess, lack of a better word there, in, in Tampa. It makes sense to me. I'm a little surprised. I actually liked Buckner. I, I thought he was I a good he did coach. Good. Uh, it was interesting move there by the Raiders as they bring back another old, reliable coach. But I think it's a good move for Oakland just in terms of getting the best out of your players. Just keep him out of the draft room. That's uh, where you don't want him. A good move for who? The, the Raiders. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, what did I say? Oakland. Oh, that's bad. <laughs>